of all of the characteristics for all three of the muscle fibre types. Plus, by the end of the video, you'll also have a mock question so you can check your knowledge as well. This simple acronym that I've used with hundreds of learners already has really, really helped them remember the difference between type 1, type 2A and type 2B muscle fibres. The beauty of it is it's easy. It's easy to remember so that when you get into your exam or you want to use this information later on when you're training clients, it's easy to remember. Now, quite often when you have a big list of characteristics to remember, they kind of get all mixed up in your head and you get confused as to which one you're talking about. So here we're going to clarify them and give you a way of remembering them. The way to make the most of this video is to grab a pen and a bit of paper because you're going to want to write down this chart and the acronym that we use so you can use it later on. First thing you need to know is that not all muscle fibres are created equally. We have three different types of muscle fibres, type 1, type 2A and type 2B and they all have slightly different characteristics that allow us to do different things. So why do you need to know about muscle fibre types? This goes far beyond understanding it for your anatomy and physiology exam. It's also about being a trainer and instructor. So the exercises that you choose for your clients in relation to their goal need to recruit certain and specific muscle fiber types to help achieve that goal. And if you're just guessing and you're not familiar about what those differences are, then you cannot guarantee the goal that your client's gonna get based on the exercises and the workouts that you give them. So let's get started on this chart. So it's a chart of characteristics, so what you need to do is you need to draw a chart out similar to what you can see on screen at the moment. So there are three columns and there are four rows. So draw that up straight away now. You'll know, and then what I want you to do is on the first column, write type one, and then the second column, write type 2A, and then type 2B. So you've got the title across the top. Now the easiest way of remembering this and getting it set up in your head is to use a very quick acronym. So where you have type one, what I want you to do is I want you to write the word one down in the remaining boxes. So you can put the O, the N and the E. So let's start filling in the chart. Start off with O, that stands for oxygen. So you can write in here that it's slow oxidative because that's the muscle fiber type, it's slow twitch and it uses oxygen. And then you're also going to write in here lots of mitochondria. Then as you go down, we're going to use N. So N stands for network. So this means it's got a huge amount of blood flow and therefore it is red in colour. And then the next one, when you write in E, E is going to stand for endurance. So endurance is going to be the type of exercises that you do or the rep ranges that you do. So this is going to be things like going for a long run, a marathon. Those type of exercises fall under this endurance bracket. And that's because these muscles are slow to fatigue. So you can use them over and over and over and over and over and they're not going to fatigue as quickly as some of the other muscle fibre types. And that's the basics of completing this chart. So once you've done this one side, you can then do the exact opposite on the type 2B. So as you go through, you go, okay, so it's not oxidative anymore. This time it's glycolytic. And it's, if you want to, it's non-oxygen, i.e. anaerobic. So you can write that in that box. Also in this box, you want to write that there are few mitochondria. So no mitochondria or few mitochondria. Then in the next one down under network, it's going to be poor blood flow and therefore it is white in colour. And then on that final box underneath, level with where it says endurance on the type 1, we're going to put strength and power in here. So this is anything where you're doing it very fast in particular. So this might be explosive sprints, for example, or that you're working in a small rep range on your resistance training. So the next one to complete is the type 2A muscle fibre column. Now this is the one right down through the middle. So in here, level with the O that we had for oxygen on the type 1. Now we're going to go for somewhere in the middle. So it's neither totally oxygen nor is it totally glycolytic. So in this place, we're going to actually write fast, oxidative, glycolytic. So sometimes it's known as fog muscle fibres, but fast because it's a fast twitch, it's one of the type two, therefore it's fast twitch, the same as what we had on the type 2B, but it's oxidative and glycolytic, so it's a fog fiber. So you can pop that one in there, and it has a middling number of mitochondria, it has some mitochondria. Then as you go down into the next column, the network, it has an okay blood supply, not as good as the type one muscle fibers, but much better than the type 2B. 
And as a result, if you think that the first ones are red in colour, the type 2Bs are white in colour, it's going to be somewhere in the middle between those, so we'll call them pink. And as you go down to the final row, instead of endurance or strength and power, this one is going to be hypertrophy. So these muscle fibres are really great at increasing in diameter, but also very adaptable muscle fibres. They can act a little bit like type 1, they can act a little bit like type 2B, and they sit round about our anaerobic threshold. So these muscle fibres are going to be really good for sports like 400, 800 metres in particular, and also anything that's in the 8 to 12 repetition in terms of weight training. So there you have it, you have a completed chart of characteristics for all of your muscle fibre types, all three of them, and as part of that, you can now jot that down quickly by using that one acronym over and over again, which means that when you get a question in your exam, you can just jot down the one acronym and you can work out your answer from there. So now you know everything you need to know about muscle fibre types, let's test your knowledge with this level three anatomy and physiology mock question. In order to answer this question, all you need to do is to click the link that is on the top right of this screen and you'll be able to vote for your answer. So the question is, which type of muscle fibres contain the highest number of mitochondria? Is it A, type 1, B, type 2A, C, type 2B, or D, fast twitch? So pop your answers by literally clicking the link that's on the top right of this screen and I'll go through the answer with you now. So if you need any extra time, press the little pause button. Okay, so the answer is A, type 1 muscle fibres. So like what we just went through on the table, then the type 1 muscle fibres are the oxidative ones. These are the ones that have the highest number of mitochondria because that's where the aerobic energy is created. So massive well done if you got that one correct. If not, have a look back over the video and just see where maybe you got things mixed up a little bit. To download a hundred more questions just like this one, all you need to do is hit the link that is with this video and you'll be able to access them straight away. If you like this video, make sure you hit the little thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.